There's lots of challenges ahead for the people who will be elected to local office. How can we handle those challenges and who should be the ones that are going to handle them with us? Well, we're going to find out from somebody that knows. Wes Ullman, former mayor of Seattle from 1969 to 1977 and a very knowledgeable guy right here on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert and we're going to get to Mayor Ullman in just a second. But before we do, I wanted to uh, let you know that the Around the Americas project, the Ocean Watch vessel, is well on its way now. It's south of Florida. And here's the latest. By late afternoon, this is of our October 28th, the tropical island of San Salvador, where a fellow by the name of Columbus made a celebrated landfall a good five centuries ago, was just over 50 nautical miles south, and the eastern flank of Cuba in a place called Guantanamo was another couple of hundred miles beyond. The world is a funny place, heaven and hell, just an overnight sail apart. Be sure to follow us right here, uh, and we're going to let you know more about the Ocean Watch and the Around the Americas project. Go to the website, aroundtheamericas.org, and you'll learn more. Wes, Mayor Ullman, welcome Sam, to the show. Nice to be here. Wow, this is, this is an honor. We've had governors before, we've had mayors before, we've had members of Congress before, but I don't know that we've had someone who has been uh, a mayor of Seattle during a, as difficult a time as you did. Yeah, it's a piece of cake uh, at the present time. I keep hearing this is the worst... Uh, uh, fiscal uh, challenge that we've had ever had that's not, not true it, we in 1970 um, it, it was so bad the Boeing company began with 103,000 employees wound up with 39,000 employees and at that time it was the only show in town we didn't have a Microsoft we didn't have an Amazon or on and on yeah uh, let's actually let's go to history link because it talks about you and, it, and it's really interesting let's go to the first quote but it says, when Wes Ullman became mayor in Seattle in 1969, an all-powerful city council, mostly concerned with the interests of downtown business establishment, dominated municipal po politics. By the time he left office in 1977, he and his staff had shaped a new city government led by a strong executive and professional administrators and designed to respond efficiently to the needs of all Seattle citizens. Next quote. Let's go, let's go on to the next quote. When Ullman ran the city during one of the most tumultuous periods of its history, he was a politician of his times and the sweeping political and cultural revolutions of the 1960s paved the way for the changes he made. Wes Ullman left behind a very diff different city from the one he'd found eight years before. Uh, would you like run again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, not, you know, you, you have only so many uh, times in the barrel and then you really need to move on. Well, his history's treating you well. Uh, why do you think that's so? Uh, I think the further you get away from the events, the better, the better it looks. But uh, we, we had some, some real successes, and uh, we had some very difficult times. It, these were the, this was the time of the, all of the protests against mm -hmm. the Vietnam War. We had 10,000 people marching down the freeway to my office. Uh, and, and you were uh, supposed to stop the Vietnam War, right? Yeah, I was supposed to stop the war. Uh, we, had, uh, we were the bombing capital of the United States, front page of the, of the New York Times. Uh, why are there so many bombings in Seattle? We had several groups. We had the Weathermen, which was a radical white uh, group. And we had uh, a group of uh, black militants. Uh, they were a local group. Um, we had a number of bombings at the university. For example, the university library was bombed, and two people were killed in the library stacks. The ROTC building was bombed, and on and on. So uh, we had all kinds of exciting things happening then. Uh, we, we dealt with them as best we could. Uh, fortunately, the state law had changed the year that I took office, the year before I took office. Incident, co coincidentally, I was in the, the state senate and, and helped to get that law passed, which made the Seattle mayor a strong mayor for the first time. Before that, the uh, mayor uh, was not able to really, he didn't run the city. He was a figure at a camp person who basically cut ribbons. Oh. Well, and then there was this famous billboard. Let's get that billboard up because everybody mm. around the, the country knows this. Will the last person leaving Seattle turn out the lights? I remember it well. <laughs> How much fun was that when you saw it? Uh, well, it wasn't any fun uh, at all. But, um, uh, you know, I, I was in office for less than a month when I got a telephone call from the CEO of the Boeing Company one Friday afternoon 
And he said, Mr. Mayor, very, gr very uh, gruff person, uh, engineer with a crew cut in those days, you know, you, you never saw anybody with crew cuts. Uh, and he said, the Boeing Company has a very significant uh, announcement to make on Monday morning. I will send a team down to brief you. And I said, well, um, what uh, is this about? He said, I can't talk about it. But then Monday morning, they announced this huge uh, layoff that was going to happen. And at that time, uh, we wound up at the very bottom when the sign showed up. Uh, we wound up uh, with about a 25% unemployment rate, the highest, uh, in, wow. in, highest in the country and the highest we'd ever had since the Great Depression. What, uh, what was there that you as the city mayor uh, could do? I could ride a lot of airplanes. Uh, I, I spent uh, literally f at least four trips a month. We were fortunate in one respect. We had uh, Maggie, Senator Magnuson, who was mm -hmm. uh, chair of the Appropriations Committee. Oh. And we had Senator Jackson, Scoop Jackson, who was a real powerhouse in the United States Senate at that time. So I spent a great deal of time. In fact, in Maggie's office, they had a desk over in the corner where I would kind of make my, uh, my main location. Norm Dix was, uh, his, uh, was Senator Magnuson's uh, administrative assistant at that time. So Norm would shepherd me around the various uh, offices and the departments in the, in the government. And we'd beg for money, just literally. Uh, and, and we made it through. Well, let's, let's go to this week because we've got <clears throat> what some people would think would be a similar situation. Uh, MyNorthwest.com, we've got Boeing machinists say there was nothing that they could do, and there it is, the plane's headed to uh, South Carolina. Was this an avoidable situation from a governmental standpoint? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, really, I, I would question whether it really is avoidable. Um, the state of, uh, of uh, South Carolina literally opened up the, the vault and they made a package that, that uh, nobody could refuse. Um, and of course the state of Washington has already made a very substantial uh, uh, contribution in incentives, write-offs, uh, and uh, I, I, people are generally blaming the union. The union might have, uh, have precluded it, but uh, you know from your business that these decisions are made over a long period of time. This didn't just happen as a result, of, I don't think, of the failed negotiations of last week or of this week. Um, I think the Boeing Company wants to, to uh, uh, have different sites uh, so they don't have all their eggs in one basket. But uh, it's going to be a truly a loss to this, this community. It's a very important uh, engine, economic engine, driver. That's just one of the things that's, that is a, a loss and one of the issues that the, the new mayor and the new King County Executive and new council and new port commissioners are all going to have to deal with. Let's go to the Seattle Times. Uh, October the 4th, the new King County Executive and Seattle mayor mm -hmm. will confront hard economic realities. Let's go to the first quote. Mm -hmm. For all its periodic NUI, um, Seattle is a world-class metro. Maintaining this strength will require enhanced cooperation among officials and policies and strategies mm -hmm. that match this reality. The real competition is with Shanghai, Sao Paulo, uh, London and on and on. It's not between Seattle and the east side. Uh, let's not go to that second quote yet. Here's, here's what I'm asking about. Is, are some of the people who are running for office, are they really ready to deal with Seattle competing with the world as opposed to Bellevue? Uh, well, <laughs> it's difficult to say because there, there's a huge learning curve. The two candidates that emerged from the primary uh, are brand new to for government. Mayor. Yeah, for mayor. For, uh, they're brand yeah. new to government. And uh, uh, so they're going to have to learn. They're going to have to learn on the job. Uh, I think uh, both of them are, are pretty smart guys. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, I, I think, maybe has a better experience. He has some business experience. He's run a business organization. Uh, and the person I'm supporting is Jill Malahan for that reason. And we're going to get back to that in just a minute. I just wanted to, to remind everyone that we're right here on Public Exposure every week with great guests, and this might be one of the best we've ever had in 17 years of doing the show. Wes Ullman, who was mayor of Seattle from 1969 to 1977, and he's talking not only about the local difficulties and how to deal with it, but who should lead us as we go forth. Uh, by the way, if you want to see more interviews with different candidates, go to scantv.org. Diane Ferguson, the executive director of SCAN, did interviews with several city council candidates and mayoral candidates. Strongly encourage you to go to scantv.org, and while you're there, check out the SCAN awards as well, which are coming. Um, so let's talk. we're going to talk about Joe Malahan a little bit more and Mike McGinn, too. Let's go to the next quote, if we can, go back to, to that second quote. 
Managing public needs and resources. Look at the most successful regions of the world, and you will find that government must perform some essential functions very well. Let's go to the, the last quote on this article. Uh, Nor can we assume the next Bill Gates will just happen to be from here and want to come home. The region's top officials must, must help the, the push to develop promising new industries here that can capitalize on the uh, world that's emerging. Um, do we have people like that in government who recognize this? or who want to be in government? I think we have people who are capable of recognizing it um, and, and can step up to a learning curve. You know, let's take the city of Seattle. The city of Seattle is a major enterprise. It's a $4 billion uh, operation. That's huge. Yeah, that bigger is. than your company. It's even bigger than mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is a company that uh, has bargains with 39 different labor unions. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's just a huge enterprise. They have a, uh, four dams, uh, they have uh, um, uh, multi, many thousands of acres of, of Cedar River watershed, uh, a major, they are the major supplier of water for the entire region. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a business, it's a huge business. The, bu the business uh, has to deliver services, I mean that's a, it's, it's a reason for existence. But nonetheless, it still has to operate as a business to make sure it, it continues to churn out the revenue and make sure that it continues to operate so that those services can be delivered. Um, and, and again, that's the reason why we really need somebody who has some experience in keeping that kind of an enterprise going. It's been an issue in the campaign, and it is a, in, in general, it's indicative of a huge issue, and that's transportation. The Washington Department of Transportation somehow found the money to uh, do an interesting video of the falling of the viaduct. Uh, there are some people generally who are questioning that. We're going to go to the to the video of it, uh, uh, but there. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to uh, f between four minutes and four thirty-five is where we need to be on this particular video. So, uh, in any event, they're they're really questioning where whether or not this video is even proper. Uh, and is even appropriate. But aside from the video itself, oh, there it is, uh, where we're going. Um, when we, a lot of people are saying that it wouldn't even fall this way, and it was, it's kind of a joke. But uh, first off, do you know how this video even got done? Sure. Um, um, well, the, the company that did it is one of the major contractors uh, for the the tunnel, uh, and uh, so I mean, th this is this is a part of the process of. Tuning up support and fear, and uh, and and that's what happened, and that's why you're seeing this video. Um, and it's it's normal. It, it's it is like the Seattle housing property tax levy. The persons who have underwritten that you've seen all the ads, three hundred thousand dollars, are the persons who will make a living off that for the next four or five years. Wow. Uh, same principle here. So, but it comes out of a state agency. That, it, seriously, as a taxpayer, that really smells to me. Well, uh, I, that's the way it normally is done, that the, the people who have a vested interest in the outcome do their very best. Uh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not saying this is approved, but it, it happens. It, yeah. It's the way it's done. Well, let's, let's then go to the, the <coughs> Malahan again. You have indicated um, why you are, are uh, where you are. What, what can we look forward, if, if Malahan does indeed win and become mayor, what can we look forward to to him as, a, as an administrator of this $4 billion budget? Well, I think it's important to know that he, he is, a, I think at least in my talking to him, I've sat down with him and sp spent some time with him, he's a fast learner. You know, he's, he's able to, to, to uh, uh, understand, comprehend uh, concepts and, and, and can uh, uh, communicate those. Um, I think that he's got a learning curve. There's just no question about it. When you step up from uh, operating a small division in a, a telephone company uh, to running, again, this $4 billion uh, enterprise, uh, and, and again, also faced with a $72 million shortfall in projected revenue, uh, that's, uh, he is going to have the, his work cut out for him. The real secret, this, you know, my philosophy of management when I was mayor, and I, we had 10,000 people and all that, is you get the very best talented persons that you can. You gather them around you, uh, you, you let them go to work, and then you take credit for them. <laughs> uh, and and it, his success or his failure is going to depend upon the quality of persons he gets. 
Um, uh, I, I could name a couple of examples, but I don't want to do that at this time. But uh, in terms of previous mayors, uh, one in particular who just didn't, uh, wasn't able to gather the, the, the cadre of people around him that really um, could make him a success, and therefore he was a one-term mayor. Mm. Uh, let's go to city council. There are some interesting <coughs> races. Uh, Sally Bagshaw and, and her race. Uh, she's she, Sally Bagshaw and, and David Bloom, uh, two reasonably well-known people here in the city. Um, do you have a preference there? And why? Uh, I'm prejudiced. Uh, my wife, when she ran Metro, she was the executive director of Metro, she hired Sally as the lawyer for Metro. And so we go way back. We've been to their house or they've been to our house. Uh, but that's not even really uh, that important. What is important is she's a very smart person, very bright, um, and I believe she's going to be a real leader on that council. I think she's, she's going to win it, I believe, and uh, uh, there's no question in my mind that she's going to be one of the leaders in the council. Nick Licata is running for re-election. Uh, he is opposed by uh, a strong candidate, Jesse Israel, and uh, Nick's been outspoken. Uh, at the same point in time, he has been a neighborhood guy. If there, if, if there are any neighborhood guys on council, it's probably Nick Licata. Uh, what do you think about that race? Well, uh, Nick is a neighborhood guy, and, uh, and he reflects their, the interests of, some of the, uh, many of the neighborhoods. Uh, uh, my concern with Nick has been that he has not been very um, uh, effective. He, he, a lot of votes have been, you know, eight to one, and, and Nick has been the one. Uh, Maybe you need some people like that on there. I'm supporting his opponent, Jesse Israel, simply because I think we really need to get the, a city council that's really working together. You know, they're, 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 they're compromising internally, and then they're, they're coming out and making the right decisions. An open seat is the one that uh, Robert Rosencrantz and uh, Michael Bryan are uh, vying for, uh, contrasting <coughs> styles, and uh, just, just by the pictures, contrasting. Uh, what's uh, what's your thoughts on that race? Well, again, I'm biased on that one because uh, a, a week ago, um, uh, two weeks ago, Friday, I gave a, a, a coffee hour at my home for Robert Rosencrantz, and we had about 65 people. A very successful one. Um, he, uh, he he's a businessman, and as, if you look at the city council, uh, there aren't any. Mm -hmm. The only person uh, who has ever really run a business is Jan Drago. She ran a ice cream store, and and they really need some business experience, and that's the reason why I'm supporting him. Well, let's see. Should we take a break? Yeah, we're going to take a very short break, and when we come back, we're going to come back to a different way to introduce the King County Executive Race. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Wes Allman, who was the mayor of Seattle from 1969 to 1977 and has been very involved in the community at all times and ever since then. He's talking with us about the challenges that the city faces and the, the region faces, and he's also talking with us about who is best capable of facing those challenges in a positive way for us. Um, if you want to see more interviews uh, with more candidates, go to scantv.org. Uh, Diane uh, Ferguson, the executive director of SCAN, did some great interviews with him. Strongly encourage you to go there. Now, are we ready to introduce uh, Susan Hutchison in sort of a different way? You ready? Many people have asked, who is Susan Hutchison? Maybe a better question is, when is Susan Hutchison from? Susan Hutchison supports the Washington Policy Center, a free market fundamentalist organization. Maybe she comes from the 1920s when deregulated markets led to the stock market crash and the Great Depression. Susan Hutchison has been endorsed by longtime gun rights advocate Alan Gottlieb. So maybe she is from the 1800s when people sometimes settled their arguments in a different way. For 10 years, Susan Hutchison sat on the board of the creationist Discovery Institute. So maybe she is from a time even further back than that. The question is, do we want Washington slipping back into the past? Or do we want Washington progressing into the future? So that's the way the supporters of Dow Constantine have introduced uh, Susan Hutchison by saying she is a candidate from the past. Uh, and that, that ad was uh, done, I think, in reaction to an ad that a supporter of Susan Hutchison did introducing uh, Dow Constantine. And if, if that is ready, then uh, we're almost ready to go to that. So let's go to that right now. Experience to run King County, but what kind of experience? Dow raised taxes 10 times. 
The budget almost doubled to $5 billion. Dow dipped into the reserve fund, paid millions for ferries going nowhere, but threatened to let the Green River Valley flood. Now we're filling sandbags and facing cutbacks. Thousands of workers on furlough, human services cut, public health clinic going, parks closing, animal control out the door. Dow has the experience, but it's the wrong experience. Well, Mayor, there are definitely differences between uh, Mike McGinn and Joe Malahan, but there probably are more differences between Susan Hutchison and Dow Constantine. What do you think about that one? Well, there are some significant differences between the two, and I think it's good that voters have that kind of a, a very clear choice. Um, on the one hand, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to in full disclosure here, I, I've been helping and supporting Susan Hutchison. She's asked me to be co-chairman along with Rob McKenna. Uh, of her transition team. <clears throat> uh, there's, the, the choice is a good one, I think, because uh, Einstein once said that uh, the, de the definition of insanity is doing the same thing time and again and expecting different results. Uh, and if, in fact, we, we believe that the county has been well governed, then uh, Dow should be reelected uh, and should be elected county executive. But I think it's generally agreed and accepted that the county's in deep trouble. Uh, they're facing a $42 million shortfall, and they have some, some systemic problems in terms of their, their revenue sources. Um, there really needs to be a whole new um, uh, approach to how the county is governed. And, and I think uh, the, one, the one commercial we just looked at is an interesting one because she, according to that commercial, was uh, uh, typifying the past. In fact, I think the opposite is true. The, the past mistakes, you can't ask someone to, to come up with different results, a different conclusion, doing the same things with the same persons, the same leadership, and the same uh, concepts. Well, the history of you and, and the way it's written about you is that you're a big liberal. And it's interesting that a big <clears throat> liberal is supporting uh, someone who, Susan Hutchison, who is su supposed to be conservative. Well, last year the voters in King County made a decision, and that is that we're not going to have Republican roads or Democratic jails, uh, or we're not going to have uh, you know, sewer plants uh, that are, are, are partisan. Uh, they, they decided that we're going to have nonpartisan government in King County. So in terms of whether you're conservative or whether you're liberal, uh, I happen to be fairly liberal. Uh, and, but I, I don't, the county executive doesn't have anything to do about abortion. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do about some of the other social issues at all. Those are, those are Just like you couldn't stop the war in Vietnam when you were mayor? Exactly. You know? <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't think that's relevant. I think what's really relevant is to try to find somebody who can bring change, who's, who can be effective. Um, I've known Susan for some time, and she's a pretty fast read, good learn, um, and, uh, and, and can step up and, and bring some change, which is really badly needed in King County. One question a lot of people will have about Susan is, can she govern? How, what will her governing style be? Depends upon who she hires, who, who she, she brings in, in her, onto her team. Uh, I, I had no experience, you know, I, when I first became mayor, I had no experience with uh, in, in a management position. I'd been in the state senate and the state legislature and it took me uh, several months to, to get put the team together and I, I think that's one of the things I'm going to be trying to help her do uh, as a, as a co-chair of her transition team is to get some people who can help her govern. The person who is the executive uh, of a public entity like the county and like the state, like the city, uh, they have to put a team together, and, and, and that team is going to make or break them. Hmm. Let's talk about the port just a little bit because I want to get to the future of Seattle, and we've got two races that are kind of, kind of similar in a way. Uh, we've got uh, Albro and Vekic, and we've got Holland and Dowd. Um, tell us about those. Well, uh, Vekic and uh, Holland uh, are a part of a team. They're, they're basically running together. They've been... Uh, 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 supported by and funded by a number of the maritime unions. Um, and they are, are running against the other two. Uh, the, the, the choices are, I think, I think of the four, I think all of them are, are, would, would be able to do a pretty good job. I, I would worry a little bit about the ties to the maritime unions, only in that that might create some real conflicts for them in their decision making. 
uh, they might have some burdens, some obligations out there that might affect their decision making. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in that. Now let's let's. I want to go to this this last set of graphics, and we have to go to it very quickly. It's the future of Seattle, and when I look at the pictures from the 1962 World's Fair, I see a future forward-thinking group of people who put that on to this day looks like it's the future. But right now, when I look at what I see in, this, in Seattle, I'm not sure that I see that same mindset. Well, I'm concerned also. I, I believe that, that we, we as citizens ought to insist that our elected leaders really look, look forward, look out into the future. That hasn't happened in, in recent years, in the last several years. Um, but this is partly our fault as individual citizens and as voters. I don't think sometimes we're really insisting that our leaders take a, a longer view, that, that they take a view beyond the four years they're elected for. Uh, and I think it's very important that, uh, that we as citizens, uh, what we need is, is, is another um, uh, organization that, uh, like the one that years ago Jim Ellis put together, that uh, really looked where we wanted to be and then put a number of issues on the ballot. I think, as I recall, there are about 10 or 11 issues. Um, and uh, they're the ones that, that created, uh, for example, the, the freeway park and a lot of the improvements of many of the parks, many of the things that hap are happening at the present time. So can that be created again with, is there a new group of people out there who are, are ready to do that or have they just gone in another direction? Well, Jim's pretty old. <laughs> uh, there, are, I think there are some real. There's a, a new group of leaders that are that are coming coming through at this time. Are the are the ones who've been in power, and we got what about 30 seconds left? But are the ones who've been in power all these years are they ready to give it up? Uh, well, I think they have to, and I think most of them recognize it. Um, I've talked to Jim Ellis, and he's he's kind of looking around himself. Who's going to take this mantle? Who's going to move forward with it? Who's going to have to do the next Mountains to the Sound? And we're going to find out with that shortly after November 3rd. Mayor Ullman, thank you very, very much for being with us. Whatever you do, like his recommendations or not, be sure to vote on or before November 3rd, and we'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week. Take care.